Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa, and today, I, this is a freaking treat. I'm, I'm doing a second intro because uh, this this lesson went just <laughs> all over the place. So first yeah. off, this is Uncle Larry, Tom yeah. Bukovac. I'm gonna leave his links down below. Absolutely today, right now, go to his channel. Well, <laughs> after this video, go to his channel and subscribe mm. to his channel. It's awesome. Thank you, man. Today, uh, we started off doing a little thing that you saw in the beginning and it just went all over the map so strap yourselves in get coffee beer whatever it is your drink of choice it's going to be a long one but you're going to be freaking stoked all right all thank right. you man thanks all for right. having me yeah, yeah yeah thank you all right let's awesome. do it as you saw in the beginning tom is going to show us how to layer parts today which was freaking yeah. awesome and yeah. so your uh your layer vehicle of choice is the old boss loop station yes which is this is one you're you've got over here which is slightly different than the one i have it's very so i think i have an rc Two. Okay. Right, wait, but it's very similar. So if something blows up, it's because I'm not familiar with it. <laughs> I'm, good I'm, not, uh, I'm not real savvy with gear. It's all good. Tech stuff, you know. Okay, so uh, yeah. what 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 were we doing? What what'd you do to well, the beginning here? I just, you know, always got little tunes that go through my head, walking around, driving in cars and stuff, and I just kept, as soon as I walked in, I started playing some little oh, yeah. riff. One of my typical sad, somber, <laughs> sad music by a sad okay. man, you know. Yeah. So um Let's see. You want to hear it? Yeah. All dude. right. Here it is. We just put a guitar and a bass on, with no no click, or no drums or anything. So freestyle. This is what we yeah, we just freestyled. The, the anticipation is killing me. <laughs> Two parts. That's a. And then here comes the B section. Back to the top. Okay. Okay. So if we did a cowboy chord version of that, yeah, what were it's the... just uh, it's key C, right? Okay. So the, the, it starts off on a C chord, one chord, and a flat seven, B flat. Okay. To a G, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Which would be one flat seven five. Right? Okay. So, but there's all susses involved. So it's like C sus, and then B flat sus. Okay. To a G sus. But I got a little tricky with the um, with this. I I did a little, um, you know, where you're holding down the dominant seven okay. on the C chord with the open G string in the middle to give it a little tension. And then same thing, same shape, and then same shape again. So it's a movable shape. So right. you just got a little tension from the open G string is going. This gets a little wacky because it's like a B flat dominant seven with six in it. So okay. like, a, like a 13 chord. And then, a, and then a G7 sus release. Then it goes to a four major seven. Okay. Uncle Larry approved voice Uncle Larry. Hair, which, is, which is, we'll get into this in a minute. Yeah. All only made possible by my bizarre picking style where I, where I use the claw approach. It's like, like those are four notes, right? Okay. If you tried to do that with a pick, it'd be really weird. It'd yeah, be like, it's not, yeah, it's not the same. It's really super weird. It's almost so, like a piano. Yeah. So I'm, I'm muting the D string and the B string. I'm only I'm only playing four notes F, C, A, and E. So, and then I made a G over G over F, okay. which is kind of like call it a sharp eleven. And then A minor with some tension from an add nine minor nine. Right. So that's like the piece yeah. of the A minor chord right there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like. Four chord, and then five chord, 
just leads back to this. Feel the shape. It's fun to play. So okay. uh, it's like uh, C, C, B flat, okay. open G. Okay. And then put the F down. Uh huh. And then move it down to the E. So. Right. Yeah. And then slide that down two frets. All that. And then all the way down to G. Right. Yeah. I like those those kind of shapes, like this. Op using the open strings. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Blowing through all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, go backwards. Let's, let's do this. Uh, okay. Check this out. This is the start of all that shit. So, like, key of C is a pretty cool key on guitar, although C is where you have your most tuning problems, I've noticed in the studio. Oh, okay. All my worst tuning nightmares. I wonder why. It's been in the key of C. What, what, what string makes it it's out a, of it? It's a combination of, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, man, I almost dread when a song's in the key of C. Seriously. Because, like, there's always tuning issues with with guitars like something about this stuff yeah it, it, there's th these notes are always trouble do you ever uh do you ever like temper tune it yeah man i just have to try to like yeah just barely get into the track somehow but but man i don't know if it's a, where your fingers fall tension wise sure is in relationship to the first fret and the yeah. nut but it's always a nightmare. Like B's never a tuning problem. A's right. never tuned. D's never, but C always is. But well, anyway. it's even even like an F too, because I got because I think it's so easy to over. Right. I mean, I'm sure you don't, but for most mortals, yes, yeah, <laughs> to yeah. press too hard on those first totally. couple so strings. All this type of thing, you know, people say like it's like the Blackbird thing and McCartney, mm -hmm. which she's certainly not the first person to do it, but that's how they reference it. But like, you know, where you got the open G string. Yeah. But but I I like to do that in this key of C. Okay. Instead of trying to do it in G like he did. Mm -hmm. I like to take a C, two octaves of a C, right? Third fret of the A string, first fret of the B. Okay. Keep the, keep the G string open. Okay. Right? And just start. So it's uh, what, what are you doing? Third fret, A string. Yeah. Uh, first fret. Okay. And just grab a claw. One, two, and three. These two. Okay. Yeah. Get you, get you that big tone. Yeah, totally. yeah, dude. And you can get real clever, like you know, you can get to the flat fives. Ooh, that's nice. Remember that song Friends by Zeppelin? Yeah. Remember that song? Yeah. Totally. Oh, he even did that. That's why too. <laughs> Great, man. What would you, okay, so if you took that one step further, we're, we're doing, doing okay. kind of a side, side yeah. route here. Yeah, okay, one step further would be like incorporating it into a three note deal. Like okay. We've got these sort of parcel shapes. A lot of people call these tenths, okay. right? And you got... Note. Check this out. There's a lot of magic there. So you got... You could play a C chord, and basically just like a... a yeah, form. like A shape. For, for future reference. I, I, when I was a kid, I learned this for some reason. Form one bar chord is like this. Form two is like this. Okay. Did you ever hear that before? No. That, that sounds very Mel Bay. Yeah, like, totally. Yeah. I must have got that from some book, but I always call them form two bar chords. So, okay. So to me, this form two bar chord is like, you, you leave the middle note out and make that be your open string, right? So you got a C. Okay. And like a, a D minor, but it's got that rub, yeah, that yeah. open D. E flat's nice. E minor is works. F. You know, D7 works, G, A minor, G, F, you can get real tricky, like an E over, C over E, where you take your E minor, you just raise that fifth up to C. All right. 
Are you um B flat? Are you super X. influenced by piano players? Totally. I mean, that's where it all came from. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you, uh, yeah. you incorporate all that in your guitar. Like somebody asked me yesterday, and I was like, "How do you incorporate open strings into your lead playing in your in your in your chords?" And it's like. I don't think of them as open strings. I just think of them as notes. Okay. Like if I'm trying to, what I'm always trying to do is open up voicings and extend voicings. Like okay. I, I want to get away from your typical block voicings, you know, that people use where they're like real. All this stuff's nice, but if I can find ways to play those chords and use like way more open voicing where I got bigger stretches. Yeah. Like on a piano. Yep. It sounds way more interesting to me. Like. You know, like, let's get to the key of E for a second. Like, this one I always show people just to give me a basic idea of, of that approach. Like, like E major 7, right? Okay. You know the chord? Yeah. This chord? Mm -hmm. How would you play E major 7? Like that? You, yeah, yeah. There's the there's most common ways. We're like this. There's this. And there's this. Uh, there's, you know, there's this. But I'm always looking for ways to take that chord or any major seven chord because the major sevens are cooler than you think they are when you separate the notes and you and you don't do them in the typical situation like this. This this is cool and everything, but sure. it's like it's it's overused. Great for Christmas jazz and stuff like that. <laughs> but but I'm like I like this kind of sound. Like check this out. Wait, wait, what is that? Okay, so check it out. That's just an E major seven. Okay. So what what I did was I I do this thing where I play like two two strings with one finger. Oh, you ever try doing that? It's like uh, Ted Green style. It's like, and I do that a lot, like where I play one finger. Okay. Put it right in the middle. Try doing that. You ever do it? Uh, I've tried, but yeah, right here, like that. Yeah. You gotta mash your you gotta just mash your finger down, like yeah. Yeah. Try doing it with your uh, middle finger. Yeah. So I use that technique a lot. So like if you can do that, then you play on top of that, you play A flat, E flat, A flat, which is which is just three notes. Yeah. yeah. Put them on top. <laughs> right? It's a sick chord. Um Wait, what was the second one? Okay, dig this. Uh, I try to follow this like because I try to, every time I try to explain this, people get lost. Okay. Okay. Everybody loves the sound of a root fifth octave. Mm -hmm. It's been this, you know. Yeah. It always sounds great. Sure. You're right. It's the way the guitar rubs with the distortion and the squared off uh, overtones. You know, it just sounds great to just go root fifth octave. Yeah. So, so if you just took that up a half step, okay. and then you just impose, go down two whole steps. This is A flat. Mm -hmm. Go down two whole steps from that and play root and a fifth. So A flat. One down would be F sharp, and then one more down is E. So if you play the root and fifth of E, and then impose over the top, yeah, right? So up here, I'm imposing a C sharp fifth okay. over the A. You could do up here in D. Okay. So here's another way to do it. Here's a really good way to do it. Play the play the root fifth octave of, of a flat over the open E and B string. That's a great sound. It's like a um, angel, like in Hendrix. Yeah. So, do, do you come come across that having to just come up with parts all the time, like making yeah. your part? Yeah, I just different? love the way that sounds. You know, so like people say that. Well, it sounds like piano chords. It's like. Well, yeah, but it, it's very guitar-y, too, when you do it a certain way. You know, it's like, I just, I've always been trying to find interesting voicings. Like, like, like you, you got, I like to do, like, a lot of stuff where I put the fifth down on the bottom. Like, okay. like when I'm playing acoustic, I'll play, like, a C chord, right? Mm -hmm. Cowboy C. When you put that fifth down on the bottom. Yep. And there's, yeah. there's all kind of magic in there. That's a B flat chord. Are you oh. just playing the top three? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a B flat chord. If you think it, there's the roots, there's the third, and there's the fifth. 
and if and I'll make a B minor. Oh man. Right. D minor. D minor. D flat major. F minor. E flat major. That all just comes from. So then you got I like to take an F chord and instead of playing root fifth octave, play the root third octave. This kind of thing, dig this like an F. Replay a B flat. Yeah. Open B, open D. That's a sick sound. Brian Sutton and I always talk about those cool, he loves those low voicings too. I think everyone thinks you're playing a baritone when you do that. Yeah. But it, it's all on the guitar. You don't have to tune down. Right. You don't, you just, most people don't play down there. No. They don't play those kind of clusters down low. That just sounds like a baritone oh, guitar. hell yeah. Right? But yeah. it's not. You just do it in regular tuning. Well, especially like how you're, um, you're picking kind of near the bridge. Yeah. 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 That sounds amazing. So now, back to the chords, like we're, this whole thing I was saying. It's just all just working off this thing. All that open G string. So Dick, check this out, like, you know this chord, like, uh, like uh, this, is what, this is a really cool little thing um, that I really love doing. I do this a lot. I've worked in it a couple of my tunes. Like if you, the C11 chord, right? This is the, like uh, four over five usually. Like if, if you're, say you're in the key of F. Okay. And you were playing some kind of like real chill, kind of like, you know, old school R&B, you know, like. And then. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Chord, right? Okay. What that is, is a B flat, the four chord over a five. So like if you're in the key of F, one, two, three, four, five. And then you play the four chord over that, right? Kind of old school, sort yeah, of you know, totally. back rack kind of vibe. But now if you take that and start messing with that, okay. like uh, I'll do stuff like where I'll take this B flat major and then I'll make it an A minor to keep the same bass. So that's just B flat and A minor, all imposed over C. Same thing down the whole step. It sounds like that sounds like a whirly to me, like yeah, like totally. electric piano. And then if you really want to get the whirly sound, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you know, like you just gotta pick twelve frets. No way. Put a little tremolo on. Check this out. Dude, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Next figure. That's so awesome. Play exactly. So everything's 12 frets up from the chord you're playing. Dude, that crazy? that's amazing. <laughs> that's great. Hey, we got costumes, hello. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's an old trick, uh, that old whirly trick. Check it out. Isn't that amazing? Sounds like that reedy yeah, totally. thing. Yeah, It's really cool. A little tremolo doesn't hurt. You're freaking full of tricks today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. so you went for that. That was the A part, right? That was the A part. And then, okay. then, then, then the B part was just a four chord. 
right? And then I played a G chord over that F sharp. Okay. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Like in this in this case, I would do. I chose that route, which is basically just a cowboy G chord over F sharp. Okay. Over F. So I went like this. That's what I did. And you can't do that shit without that claw stuff. Yeah. Right? It's got... Right? That's it. So it's like... Which leads beautifully to... That's it. That's it. Let's see. I can't remember the groove again, but here it comes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's it. So then uh, that's just all about that. I call it selective picking. Like the reason I say that is because you're, you're not choosing every note of the chord. With this claw technique, you can only pick the ones you want. Yeah. And that makes it, that's what makes it sound piano y. Okay. Right? Because there's a lot of things that happen when you, when you play with a pick. You, you lose the ability to, to do that. Right. You, you, you know, like as opposed to. Well, they're all at once too. Yeah, all at once. Yeah, and I use them all. Like I'll use all five to get to get like trippy. When you're just using um, like three, do you do you bridge your pinky down? Let's see. Like uh, like play play the way you played in the beginning. Let's see. That thing, you mean? Yeah. So, so is your hand kind of floating or do you? This is floating right okay. now, but but if I needed it, it's like. Trippy chord. B flat, major, major, major seven with a six. Inch. Okay, wait a second. You have freaking giant hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be possible. <laughs> I do have big hands. So let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. What do you think? Oh, bro, your hands like yeah. freaking I, way bigger than. And mine. I developed this, the, the, you know, that whole thumb over thing when I was young, and I don't even know where that all started, you know. But that's that's to me, it was always just an extra digit for playing bass notes, like, and I use it so much, like I can't even imagine not like that's not technically the right way to play guitar. You yeah. know, classical teaches you to play. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, without those notes, I would be Yeah, lost. you do that all the time. Custom. But it, it gets yeah. like, uh, it's it's kind of, you can play bass and yeah. melody yeah, just, at the same time. Yeah. Like, and, and I was I was always trying to do that stuff where I would like, uh, like hold a, a steady note down. Any rhythm, you know, shuffle or straight. You know. I was trying to do stuff like, you know. Yeah, you know. Wait, go, go back and do that again. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Just anything like I was starting. Wait, wait, hold on. You're freaking <laughs> blown by that. Stop right now. Do exactly what you did, but really slow. I don't even know what I did. Okay. Just implying a G chord. So But but you're doing that, are yeah. you keeping Dude. <laughs> That was freaking awesome. <laughs> I just love that sound, the fist. I love that sound. Like, I'm just going, even this. That's to me is such an intoxicating sound. Like, and you 
take that fifth thing to a crazy level. Like, like you can be like. Like, check that. Wait, do that slow. Okay, so in, in E. A. That's all about the claw. Look. So you're doing groups of two. Yeah. Yeah, so and I you guess, do and have I got, pinky down. Yeah. Yeah, you use the pinky as an anchor. Okay. And I've got a real severe uh, bend there. I try to get to get to get it to pop real hard. I love that sound. So wait, where, where does all this influence come from? Like, what can people listen? I mean, obviously you, but like, what can people listen to to start to hear that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, I would have, I just, I, mean, I always talk about this guy named Steve Cox. Okay. Who's a piano player that actually I met in Cleveland and moved to Nashville. And he would show me stuff like that. You know, that's piano stuff, man. I yeah. mean, that stuff is not so trippy on a piano. It's not that uncommon. Sure. But when you apply it to guitar, like I'd, I'd probably seen him doing that. I was like, dude, show me that. Yeah. You know? And like, so... I would say that probably some piano music is probably where most of that stuff's coming from. But, you know, this doesn't have to be, these things apply to like dirty guitar. They don't have to be always clean. No, totally. You, but, you can do all that. Um, but it, it kind of it introduces you to that sound. Yes. Everything sounds better with distortion. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally, better, totally better. But, um, yeah. okay, so g give me get like a piano player or two. Okay, uh, well, I mean, you know, Fuck, Bill that Evans. you love, yeah. You know, Bill Evans is amazing. Oh, bro, so good. But I loved, um, I loved, you know, I grew up on Steely Dan, so okay. all those guys that played with Steely Dan are amazing, you know. Uh, all those guys, Mel Martian, you know, Victor Feldman, you know, uh, Don Grolnick, all those guys played amazing stuff on those records, and that stuff just seeped into my brain because okay. I was like, listen, because I'm not a big jazzer, yeah, I don't sit and listen to jazz, I mean, I don't. I don't even know the kind of blue record that it's like the cheeseburger of jazz. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that. I'm, I'm not a jazzer. Yeah. But I like to steal a couple of little jazz ideas. Like when we did that video over here with Osnoy, it was really cool to see like a real jazz. Oh yeah. Like, cause there's, there's a whole world there. Yeah. I just like to barely dabble. Dip my, yeah. Yeah. Dabble. Hey, you take a little here, a little there. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. Because I'm not, you know, I don't really want to play like atonal outside shit i don't really like that sound i'm not i'm not into that like i love to listen to alan holdsworth do it sure and that's about it yeah you know no, i hear you and uh because he was just like such a freak dear playing, you know total such a freak of nature <laughs> yeah and it's cool and even that stuff i can only take in certain doses you yep. know like i'm mean, gonna i gotta really be in the mood for that or my vishnu but every once in a while, I put that on for a little while. I'm like, yeah, I mean, this yeah. is killer. They were on something. But then I back to ACDC after that, you know, because I just love simple wow. stuff, right? That's the pizza. So, like, along those lines, you know, um, the the fifths and the fourths, those, this were, like, Steve Morris was a huge influence. Oh. If, you look in, if you look at Steve Morris's compositional style, you could take the guitar out of the equation. You could just work up his songs with, like, a symphony. Mm-hmm. And the use of fourths and fifths in his music is so intense. I don't know where he got that from, like like Baroque or something. I don't know, but he is amazing at using those parallel fourths and fifths sliding around. There's a song called like Day Four Four Four. Dregs or Dregs. Yeah. Okay. And man, his compositional style really rubbed off on me when I was a kid, I, and I just thought that the use of fourths and fifths. What I mean by that is like, like you know, most people would be like. Right, right. Okay. What about this? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll take fourths, thirds, and fifths, and mix them all together. This out. If you could take, you could take, you could take force.
It's a beautiful sound. Yeah. It sounds uh, very Asian. Yeah. I mean, here's a real simple way to break that down. Like if you started, if you just took an E chord and you just went like second fret, low strings. And then the same thing on the next two. Mm -hmm. Right? Try this, so simple. Two strings. Over right. ball over E. Yeah. And then you go here? Yeah. I'll 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 let your root. Yeah. Can you get uh, th that was a little loud. Where is so it? Be here? Yeah, yeah. And then where? And then you could be. And you could try this same thing over A. Watch. Same idea. Same idea. Yeah. With the open A. Yeah. Dude. So cool, right? Now, <laughs> now dig this. You can do the same thing with fifths. Watch. Okay. together and then it's amazing you can do just amazing things like like if you, if you took a real i always say like the simplest version of that r&b lick would be like if you're playing an e if you went all right a in the d string ninth fret same thing on the next two strings you can do it with one finger. Try that. One finger. Okay. You can, okay. Or you can do it. Yeah. First one is on nine. Slide okay. it to eleven. And then. Yeah. Yeah. I keep doing that. I'll, I'll go to A. You stay there. How sick is that, man? Hey, right? <laughs> Reggie, Dude, go, that is Reggie, so go, good. Eat your heart out. Wow. So that kind of stuff. And then like, there's so many of those little things, man, that you can work in. Like, you know what it all starts for me. You know what I, uh, I'm i really noticing about this is this is how you become melodic on guitar. Right. Like right. that, right. You, you know what I mean? Like, I think so many people practice ripping all the time. Right, right. But like stuff like this and watching you do that, that's how you really like, s seems like you really cool. start to hear cool. things. Yeah, yeah, and melodies in there. No, here's another thing too, like... Dude, you're dropping all the bombs yeah, now. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, man. Well, this is all really usable shit. Yeah, this hell yeah. This is stuff that you could play in pop music. Yeah. I like stuff that you can use in rock and pop, and it's like, you don't have to be playing like a bunch of real heady kind of sure. stuff to, to use it. I like riffs that, and concepts that can be used in, in very common music, right? Yeah. So, like, everybody knows uh, the... the um, the partial six, like the most standard 101 uh, R&B lick, you know? Right? Yeah, sure. Everybody knows that, right? So there's so much more to that 
than just that. I mean, you can take that concept and just go endlessly with it. And I have like partial chords, like separated by one string. Okay. Right? So you got like, you know, you know, your typical B. Yeah, yeah, the like B that, yeah. Right, A minor, B minor. Okay, now dig this, watch. Keeps going. Yeah. People only do them on the on on these or here, but they keep going. You know what I mean? They don't stop. You can keep working those. And so I like I work those into everything. Like. kind of shit, man. <laughs> Did you get out much as a kid? <laughs> that is yeah. freaking so, amazing. Those are just those little, they call them sixth. Cause, yeah. Because they're six, six away. And you can do so much of those, especially down in the low string. They never stop. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And that's just another claw thing. That's yeah. You can't really do that with a flat pick. Watch. Yeah, it doesn't sound the same. So I'm, I grab each one individually. Plus the tone is so yeah, cool. So much cooler, yeah. yeah. So like partial chords okay. can, be, can be more than two notes. They can be three notes. They, they dig this, like, uh, well, you know, if you take like a triad, mm -hmm. you know, root, root fifth octave or root fifth third, and you go down a whole step and then another half step. Oh yeah, this stuff's super fun. Right? There's yeah. all, there's a million worlds in there, and like all of them. So many of them, dude. Like anything you could do, like like let's just start with let's start with D. Pulls that one. All those those are just all you know, the partial chords, like they're just tops of major chords. D, G, F, B flat, E flat, B flat, F, C. B flat, you know, so they're they're endless, you know. There's a minor chord, there's a G minor, or A minor. You know, and that's that's the whole thing, like the Pete Townsend sound, you know, he was just grabbing an open D string. Yep. You know, all that shit, man. Zeppelin. Everywhere, man. Yeah, and I just, I just made a life's work. I was just finding all of those, you know, and, and like I guess later on realized, you know, that that that's part of the cage system. Yeah, I never, I never even realized that. I just was doing that, and I made a video called "The Secret" where I was talking about how I view those yep. partial chords, and then everyone goes, "Dude, that's just the cage system." Yeah. So like I never learned that. Yeah. I didn't learn the cage. Dude, system. that was the biggest yeah. light just. Yeah. When somebody showed mm -hmm. me, that, I was like, "What the hell is a cage mm -hmm. system?" And like, mm -hmm. how did I get this far in guitar without ever right. knowing right. it? Right, right. Um, okay, so well, yeah, that I mean, I think people's heads probably just popped. <laughs> well, a lot more where that came from. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna leave Tom's links down below. Make sure you check that oh, out. His channel is freaking fantastic. One Thank of my you. favorite channels. Thank Very you. inspirational. Thank you. Even if you can't play what he's playing, it'll definitely inspire you to play. Thank so you. check it out for sure. Thank I'll you. leave it in the description box below. Thanks so much for checking it out. Peace out. See you all. Bye-bye.